I have okay, a whole stand for you. No, I'm good. You sure? Mm -hmm. We're with Robert Dickerson, who's the founder of the Unity Community Center, the PK, the Unity PK Pasha, world champion, martial arts, the Universal African Drum and Dance Ensemble. He's a mentor. Now they have a multi-generational approach to community development, community building. His, his young, his children and grandchildren are involved in what they're doing. They're making a huge impact in the Delaware Valley. And I can say, honestly say, that we've known each other for over 20 some years, yeah. and it's a pleasure yeah. to be here, brother. How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good, Joyce. I, I thank you for doing this, brother, you know. And uh, like you said, over 20 some years, you know, and you was one of the first uh, radio personalities that interviewed us, and it was just awesome, man, because I remember that famous word you all, that famous statement you always said. How uh, since Camden suffers a very serious image problem, uh, you would wonder why wouldn't they support organizations yeah. like this? You yeah. Know? yeah, And that was twenty some, at least about twenty five years ago mm -hmm. when you made that statement when you did an interview with us. But you know what? I think on one level, it was a blessing because to get caught up in the politics, wow. politics sometimes is so corrupt right. that mm. it would have impacted you because then. You know, another administration comes in and they may not view you the same as the previous one that's and true, they cut your true. funding or whatever. Right. And, you know, the other thing, even though it's been a struggle, um, right. the, the whole uh, notion of self-determination, because mm -hmm. that's what you what you guys have been doing. That's correct. From right, from day right. one. Yeah. So there may be well, some people in the United States who, who are not familiar <laughs> with you. So tell us about yourself. Well, my wife, myself, Wanda Dickerson, started the Union Community Center in 1983. And, you know, it was, uh, we started based on the uh, the decline of, we started seeing how Camden, not just Camden, but inner city uh, uh, all over America, all the at-risk communities in, in America was suffering a very real serious image problem with drugs was coming in, crack cocaine was coming in very strong in the early 80s. And then we saw the decline of the communities through the businesses, and we saw through how the businesses was really suffering, especially in the inner cities. But we started watching how a lot of the, uh, you know, uh, ethnic other ethnic groups was moving out of the inner cities, and the businesses, the mom and pop stores was moving out, and it was just a very blighted area on Mount Ethan Avenue in Camden, and Broadway looked like. Friends of mine come to camp and say, look like somebody dropped a bomb on Broadway, you know, because it was just so bad. But it's been deteriorating like this for, I mean, since 1983, yeah, we've been noticing yeah. it, and, mm. and it hasn't been getting any better. Well, really, after it really after the riots in right. the 60s. That's correct, yeah, yeah. right. So what drew you to Camden? What what made me do this in Camden? Yeah, because you originally you're from Philly, right? Yeah, from Philly. Yeah, yeah. I lived in Darby, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My wife was strictly 100% Philadelphia, and we met in 1973, and it was just a beautiful meeting of her step pop uh, introduced me to her uh, through because uh, I was a, a, a boxer in a boxing gym in North Philadelphia, and also we had our karate school in North Philadelphia, so I was kind of like somewhat known in that area, North Philly for those areas of boxing and, and, uh, and the martial arts. So he found me in one of the gyms I was in on 29th and Poplar, a little small storefront, very similar to what we have now in mm -hmm. Camden. Mm -hmm. And um, and he said, I, you know, something about you I like, you know, and he said, I want you to meet my daughter. And then the funniest thing, my wife was asking him, could you get me a good man in them <laughs> gyms? You know, it was a funny thing. <laughs> So he said, I'm going to go and do it for you, like that. And then it took him a while to do it, she said. But he came to me and he said, and I, I just laughed about it when he said, I want you to meet my daughter. I said, okay, I'll meet her, you know, like like that. So when I met her, it was like, you know, I really, she was very pretty, attractive. And and, and I said, wow, you know, I'm going to go all the way with this, you know. And then eventually we started doing a lot of nice things together. We liked a lot of things together. Mm -hmm. We were. So you had a lot in common? A lot in common. You know, she was doing African dance when she was in Gillespie High School, and, and she was in a lot of all the schools in North Philly. And, uh, you know, and then I was into the culture. I was into the Nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. 
and what got me to Nation of Islam, I tell this story a lot because in 1968 when, when Dr. Martin Luther King got assassinated, it gave a rise to a lot of the black power movements, you know. And then I remember in 1968, in the summertime, all the uh, the brothers from the Nation of Islam, the Black Panther Party, all of them would come and grab all the young boys off the corner. And they happened to grab myself and my two brothers, you know. So we ended up going to, to a mosque in, uh, in South Philly. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that, was, that was around August of 1968. And from that point, I got involved in the Nation of Islam, you know, but if it wasn't for the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King and us being angry with how he got assassinated, I would never end up into that movement, you know, because we were good church kids, you mm -hmm. know, at that time, mm -hmm. you know, going to church and... But did you yeah. have a, a consciousness, a black consciousness at that point? At that point, to be honest with you, no. We were just strictly, uh, you know, going to church, on the corners, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't have black consciousness until to that uh, assassination of Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King, you know. And then after that, we uh, was angry at the way he got assassinated, so I could see how the Black Power Movement got a real good, strong, uh, you know, how they regenerated from, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, after that assassination. Mm -hmm. And I always say, if it wasn't for that, I don't know if I would end up in the Black Power Movement, so into the Nation of Islam, the Black Panther, Junior Black Panther, you know, things of that mm, sort, you mm. know. I don't even know if I would ever end up in it. My two brothers also, you know. Now, um, from that, how did you uh, evolve to say, okay, we're going to do something and we're going to, we pick Camden to do it? Oh, uh, well, it's a, uh, well, what happened was in those early, uh, late 60s and, 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 and early 70s, uh, we became real strong involved in the Nation of Islam, myself, my two brothers, Warren and George, my oldest brother, George, my youngest brother, Warren. We became a lot involved in the mm -hmm. Nation of Islam in North Philadelphia, and we were very dedicated young brothers. They called us the mighty FOI, you know, mm -hmm. we were very mm -hmm. dedicated at that time, you know. And, then and you were there at the time when uh, Philadelphia was a strong presence in the Nation of Islam. That's correct, yeah, yeah. and then my brothers and myself were one of the what they called the, the young brothers that was part of that because we were very strong. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we never missed any meetings. We were always active. And, you know, the high administrator, Minister Jeremiah Shabazz mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Captain Urban and Clarence, all them guys, they all enjoyed us. You know, they appreciated our contributions at that time, you know. And I would say in 1975, when uh, Anabalaj Muhammad uh, passed away or when he had left us at that time, uh, you know, that's when myself, you know, my wife, we had met in 73, and we needed a new, uh, we said, well, my mother told us about these homes in Camden. Mm -hmm. And then she said, you know, because a lot of white people was in this area, and they were moving out. Right, you know, right, right, moving, right, right. And they right. moved out. So I said, well, I'll check it out. So my mother told us about it. We came over and checked it out, and I fell in love with the garage area and the driveway, because in Philly we didn't have that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I'll, uh, so I signed the application, and then that's how we ended up here in Camden. Okay. Yeah. But what were you doing? Were you doing most of your activities in Philly, or did you start initially doing things in Camden? Well, all of our activities were in Philadelphia. Like our right, karate school right, was in right, North Philadelphia. Right. Our boxing gym was in North Philadelphia. Uh, Arthur Hall's dance ensemble was also in Philadelphia. So most of our, uh, we just took... Tawanda, she was part of Arthur Hall? Right, yeah, she, mm. she danced with Arthur Hall. Mm. So we went from, from we took that information we had there, which was dy dynamic, and just brought it to Camden, you know. Mm. And then, but we lived in Camden for like 10 years before we started really feeling like a Camden person. It wasn't until we opened up the right, community right, center, to right. be honest with you. you know? So how did you find that location where you are now on Mount Ephraim Avenue? Well, this great friend of mine named Cornelius Lester Sr., uh, he was having a lot of problems with his children and his family. And it, came, and it was all based behind this blight that was going mm -hmm. on, you know, with the drugs and a lot of crime was going on in Camden in the, back in 79, in the early 80s. So, I mean, him decided to find a place to start a community center. And it was a great idea. And, you know, he passed away, but he passed away through violence of his own. His, his own son had killed him. You Whoa. Know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but anyway, what he his contribution was helping me get started, helping myself and my mm -hmm. wife get, get started. 
because he, he didn't have the programs. He just had finance. We came together. And we brought that little small storefront for thirty five hundred, mm -hmm. and um, we, you know, and it's the funniest thing. People ask, "Well, why did y'all get that little small storefront?" That's all we had at that moment, right, you know what right, I mean? Right. And it was just thirty five hundred and we brought it and um and we just said we're gonna make it work like we did in Philadelphia, small storefronts. Mm -hmm. And we were already used to small storefronts anyway. Right. Right. So we just made it work, you know. And uh and then when we opened up it was like, oh my god, it was like uh the African dance was our first program we we started. Mm -hmm. Hardly nobody signed up for it. It was just my my wife and our two daughter babies. Well, you know, one of our children, right? Mm -hmm. At that time, because the other one wasn't even born. So uh, we just started, and the people wasn't up on the African dance part at that time. So we said, well, we start the karate program. And when we started that karate program, we had so it was so jam packed in there. We uh, we yeah. never ever, you yeah. know. Cause I went there. I came. I, one time I came to interview you, man. That joint was jam back, man, <laughs> with, with those kids right. in there. Yeah. Now, uh, share some of the success. Cause you're a modest person, so you don't mm -hmm. really, you know. I mean, your your trophies and all that they speak for for themselves. But right. you very rarely. But I mean, your your style and your, and your mm -hmm. program is nationally known. So how how many right. championships have you won? Well. My my oldest son, this home that we're in, had over two thousand trophies. Wow! And a, and and awards. You couldn't even walk in here with mm -hmm. so many trophies. Mm -hmm. Then my youngest son, over thousands of them. And then my daughters, and you couldn't even walk in here. But as they moved moved, moved out, a lot they took a lot right, of trophies right, with right, them. Right. A lot of them broken up from us having so many of them mm -hmm. in here. Awards. I have awards in storage. When I say awards, we would need like a, a large school just to put all the awards. We've been greatly blessed from a lot of the awards. You would wonder, like I, I think about you all the time for all these years. I said all these awards I have from the governors down to the mayors, to the city council, to the freeholders. Mm -hmm. I mean, from mayors of other cities, you know, we just performed for the Ross Barack, the mayor last, last night in uh, Newark, New Jersey. When I look at all these awards, you'll wonder why an organization like us would have to suffer uh, financially through the city. Because I always t uh, tell a lot of people when I do interviews that the, uh, we're a nonprofit organization. Right. And really what the city do is they, they're responsible of supporting those who are eligible and, you know, and, and who really should have it. And then we pay our tax dollars, but what these city officials do is take our tax dollars and they give it to their friends. So it's really like a form of stealing what a lot of these politicians do in, in these in, in mm -hmm. inner cities, you mm -hmm. know. Or we pay our tax dollars, uh, we pay taxes, and the government uh, gives the uh, power to the state and the city to spend the money wisely. So, uh, and, the, and the reason why we chose nonprofit because what we offered to the community right. on the market, right. they couldn't afford it, you know. Did you ever <laughs> have backing or support on a consistent basis from the city of Camden or Camden County never, or the state of New Jersey? Never. And then what happened was Rutgers University did a, uh, they did a study on our organization. They wanted to understand, and they wanted to know why we, um, uh, last so long mm. and then when they did this study they came back with this study and the book was very thick they put it on a computer disc for us it was a real thick book and they said our organization were among the 23 percent of the nonprofits that can survive without mm. donations mm. and they said it was kind of um it was kind of very interesting how we did it and it was just basically through our performing arts our performing arts became professional enough to get paid where we could fund our own mm -hmm. organization. Mm -hmm. So then, that's that's your main uh, form of fundraising? Fundraising is our performing arts, mm -hmm. whether it's the African Dance Drum Ensemble, Karate Demos, the World Champ, UBK Bashad Jones, where we do workshops in schools and colleges on mm -hmm. discipline mm -hmm. and importance of discipline and things of that sort, you know. Also, our praise dancers performed last night in Philadelphia. So, you know, through the gospel and through mm -hmm. a lot of things mm -hmm. that we do, mm -hmm is our main source of income, how we survive. And he said, even though yours is a very small budget, 
but it's still you're amongst the 23 percent of the uh, mm. this was like the, their business the school that looked at you or just their business school right, mm. right. Mm. now um your family is very talented in mm -hmm. addition to your wife with her dancing you yeah. your sons are musicians mm -hmm. they're the drummers um mm -hmm. your one of your sons is is big with uh music with jazz yes uh at the school of performing arts he yes. i've i've been to things where he was right. <laughs> the orchestra conductor right, where they did right, the plays right. and everything uh, so what do you attribute that to i mean is it just hereditary or what oh it's definitely not hereditary is is if you put any child in a discipline program and it's like the famous scott peck always say oh uh, you put it uh if you put them in the discipline to develop self-discipline so, so I believe that our program of discipline, the martial arts, is one of the most ultimate programs mm. that develop mm. high levels of discipline. You know, and the difference in our martial arts program is that we don't just give them martial arts; we give them what we call a holistic program of the, of their culture. Because when you give someone their 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 culture, culture is the really the essence of love itself. Where you, if you don't know yourself, you don't right. know where you're going. Right, right. It's impossible to really love yourself. So our blend, our, our methodology of how we put the culture, the discipline, the spiritual parts in our program, where we could deal with the holistic person itself, it gives that child a chance to grow properly. You know, once they grow properly, and then they have kind of like, education becomes easy to them. Mm. Like most ethnic groups, you know, when they, uh, you know, when they have their children, like, you know, like they study the Chinese and Japanese, they grow up in the discipline so it's easier for them to learn. But when you have children that don't have no discipline, their right, parents right, have no discipline, right, right. they come home, their parents smoking weed, getting hot in drugs, in jail, they did have so much problems. And that's what my wife and I faced for the last 33 years with this organization with really problems of a lot of people in our organization. My oldest son calls us a rehab center where we take people. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but he had grown now, like I have three children with master's de degrees and and then one who runs my wife's hair salon in Linda Wall. Mm -hmm. So we've been blessed as far as the educational part. We try to be example to the community as a family itself, letting them see the value of the discipline and mm -hmm. the culture. Mm -hmm. Now you take, um, take young people from age what to what? Well, it used to be four years old mm -hmm. right, for the public. Because we now, my wife now on our grandchildren, great grandchildren. Now they all born in it. So you might see people perform at one years of age on mm -hmm. stage. You mm -hmm. know, and that's only because our family have grown. So know? that little drummer, he's, he's he's your grandson. No, he's one of our top dancers' uh, son. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you know, it's just good to show you how 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 the family, the extended family, have grown from our organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just mm -hmm. unbelievable, really. Now, has, has, uh, in, have you had like a spinoff organization other than your family, right. other than your, your children and grandchildren? Mm -hmm. Have you had like spinoff people that went somewhere else and started the same kind of program? Right. I have a black belt that went down to Virginia. He has a wonderful program. He has a martial arts pro program. Uh, his name is Robert Wilson. He's doing very well down in Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, he's one of our spin We have a great friend of ours who teaches in uh, San Diego, California. So uh, so we have people that spin off into different areas, but not that many. Those are the two main ones that's very successful, mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. more successful than what I am, you know, as far as a fine, fine financially. But, they're, uh, but I'm just more successful in the image of us being, you know, having considered one of the best African dance troops in America, four time Hall of Fame karate school. Mm -hmm. Then our sons are three, you know, are they are they two thousand eleven Emmy Award winners and and we have a gospel group that won uh first place at like over thirty thousand groups all over America. Mm -hmm. So so you know, I'm more successful in image. Um you said that your son says that you're rehab. Right. right. Um like I always, I always viewed Unity Community Center as like an oasis, right? Uh, yeah. And where people can come mm -hmm. and they can find some kind of stability, they can find some kind of a uh, purpose, they can find right, right. Uh, a sense of self. So, uh, how do you continue in mm -hmm. 
because you were doing this when the crack cocaine epidemic hit. Yes. And that took a heavy toll on Camden. It took right. a heavy toll on Philadelphia. Yes. But yet you were still able to attract young people and help them get focused and centered on their lives. So um, what do you attribute that to? You know, you talked about discipline, right. but what a, I mean, you also do a spiritual piece. So what, what do you attribute all of that to? You know, Joyce, honestly, I look at that as having programs that can attract the youth. Mm. And there's like borderline children. When you go to most schools, there's always a borderline child that could go either good or bad. Right, right, right. So we, if, if you have the right programs that can grab them borderline children, uh, if you get them right and they come in the program and they develop very good, the parents see them developing and changing their life around. And then it's also encouragement is also their role models to those who are bad. Because even the bad children, children that end up in jail and come, mm. and they come back, they say, wow, I, mean, I wish I would have came to y'all's karate school. I wouldn't have been in the situation I'm in now, you know. So I think that it's the programs, having certain programs that are positive that can attract a certain amount of youth. Mm. And we've been now, you, you go to, you go, you're in and out of the schools. So do you yeah. have programs in the schools too? Not yet, but we working on probably doing a proposal for a pal school now, but we sending to them today, right? Mm. For working in their schools doing things. But we work with uh a Dune Day, a Dune Day, Lois Flandes' mm -hmm. daughter, Boomi. Mm -hmm. Boomi Fernandez and and they she had us in the schools teaching. So that was in Philly, days, right? Right, that's mm -hmm. in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So we're mainly in the schools in Philadelphia, but we perform for a lot of the schools all through New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, you know, doing school work workshops and school assemblies on whatever pro program they want. But our main program is the Universal African Dance and Drum Ensemble. So how can people get more information about the Universal uh, Dance and Drum Ensemble? They go to our website, uh, www.unitycommunity.com. That's our old website we had since 1998. And that website has so much information on it. But we have a new website coming out, uh, unitycommunitycenter.org, that's going to be more of a website for, like, the business. going to be mm -hmm, much, not mm -hmm, much information mm -hmm. on it, just enough for you to know who we are and what we're doing, and more up-to-date type of website. Ken, <coughs> you do, excuse me, mm -hmm. do um, e-commerce on the web because you have... DVDs right. that you sell. That's correct. You uh, can you take donations and things like that through yes. the website? Yes, on our website www.unitycommunity.com, we have a PayPal, and also a lot of people call and we have credit card machines. Mm. But like on uh, on this new website, we have the e-commerce where you know we're going to be selling drums, uh, authentic traditional uniforms. We're going to be selling books, cultural books, books that deal with. Uh, you know, uplifting a person mm, uh, mm. educationally and spiritually and culturally. You know, we're gonna be selling items like that. So, so on our new website, we're gonna have have that part. Okay. Mm -hmm. How can people uh, be supportive of what you do? Well, if they donate to us, we're we're an organization that will not only just be grateful, but we'll be fully appreciative to ones that donate to us because all the donation will go to us helping other at-risk youth uh, experience, you know, the disciplines and educational programs that builds life skills that they're going to need to survive in hard days and times coming to uh, among us. Mm -hmm. And also we have uh, uh, their do donation will help them have the children experience the real true value of how the performing arts can benefit their lives and make them feel, give them the confidence, give them the inspiration of wanting to not just live, but uh, love and appreciate education. Mm -hmm. Because we believe education is the key, you know. Mm -hmm. and How can, uh, you know, so we're, we're coming up, like, to me, I see I see you everywhere. I, uh, you know, doing Kwanzaa, I saw mm -hmm. you everywhere. Right, right. Uh, you're going to probably be uh, doing a lot of things with Martin Luther King and then yes. then Black History Month Black you'll be oh, jammed yes. up jammed up in Black History so, Month so but how can people get a hold of you to book a performance and what does it require right if they call uh, number 856 365 4817 
that number, we had that number available 24 hours a day. And then, and like most times we answer that phone. If not, that means we're on the road. Because all mm. of our ministries are also, a lot, of, you know, a lot of our performers and they administrate in different school districts. So they call that number, 856-365-4817. Uh, we'd be happy to come to their schools, to their churches, to their mosques, to their community events, uh, weddings. Uh, we perform at funerals. It's mm -hmm. just, uh, mm -hmm. We have a famous brass band, UCC Royal Brass Band, that we do a lot of uh, funeral processions. So you do like the New Orleans style? New Orleans style, style. Right, right. yes. Mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. there's so much we have. And the programs that we have, we found that it really truly attracts positive youth. And then it also encourages the negative youth to come. And we work miracles with so many problem children, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, when he comes here, now he, he didn't come this year, right? but when he comes here, Alana Karinga mm -hmm. specifically asked for the Universal Dance and Drum Ensemble to yes. perform. So how does that make you feel when people who are renowned, people who right. are proponents mm -hmm. of African culture, African uplift, right. uh, people who want the best for our, our community, recognize what you're doing and, and request you Right. to be a part of what they're doing. Well, you know, the funniest thing, like Dr. Malala Karenga and his wonderful wife, Tia, Tia Moore, they've been in my home, uh, you know, and, and they appreciate what we're doing from the area where we're at. You know, mm -hmm. they know we're not fine, fine, financially uh, stable like that, but we have enough finance to keep the program going and keeping the culture alive and keeping the Guzo Saba alive because what Dr. Malala did was so... It was more than a word. I can't use the word genius, but mm -hmm. but it was, it was real profound. Yeah, it yeah. was so pro profound. Mm -hmm. Bringing those seven principles, just those seven principles, as many principles, but those seven basic principles, it's just hard for us to get off of unity. But for me personally and my wife, uh, we are so honored to perform for Dr. Melania Karen. We've been doing it for him since 1998, and we've been through New York with him, all through New New Jersey and Philadelphia. And through a great friend of ours, Reginald Untumi, she is how we got to really meet Dr. Malana Karenga. You know, mm. it was such a joy and a pleasure to him to even when he came to our house. I was like, oh my God, I wanted to paint everything up instantly, you know, <laughs> from the come. And he, you know, even yourself, a great person like yourself, you know, it's just an honor for us to be amongst people like like this, you know, mm. to perform for mm. the. Million Man March the, uh, for for the Honorable Miss Lord Farrakhan. Uh, uh, we perform with so many celebrities and high level people that deal with the culture mm -hmm. and deal with the helping the rising of African American people in America and the world that we're just so much honored. Just, we're really truly honored in being around so many great leaders. And I can name so many of them that we've been around mm -hmm. and then with mm -hmm. famous Joe Piscopo, uh, Cornell West, uh, I mean, just so many people. I just go on and on and on. Reverend Jesse Jackson, uh, uh, Ben Jellish. You know, when I went to Africa with, with all these guys, man, it was just unbelievable. You know, Julie Bond. Mm -hmm. I, I go on and on and on. I just, I don't like doing that sometimes because I'll forget somebody's name, you know. But we've been really blessed to be around so many great people and performing for them, you know. Um, you've been to Africa. Your wife was part of Arthur Hall. And a lot of people may not remember Arthur Hall. He was a proponent of authentic African dance and culture. Yes. And um, you guys have that, and you promote that, and you teach that in your uh, your, your school, your right. the, the martial arts, and all of that. And you've been to Africa several times. Yes. So, what does what type of responsibility do you feel? Mm -hmm. Because I notice when you come out, mm -hmm. uh, when you perform, you have you performing with traditional instruments. Yes, mm -hmm. those are uh, actual oh. rhythms and stuff that are mm -hmm. are that that you're doing. So, do you feel any extra responsibility to protect and promote the culture? Oh yes, that's that's our main purpose. Is just do that because we believe that the culture 
is very important for African Americans or anyone of African dis descent because what Africa contributes to the world through the resources and how every country, every continent really goes to Africa and build their, uh, you know, their con country and their continents all for what Africa, right. all for the richness mm -hmm. of Africa, mm -hmm. you know. So we, uh, so I feel obligated and it's my mission and I love doing it, teaching people the value of Africa, what Africa, what we call geographical area of Africa, what it has contributed to the world. And then when I say the world, in some people's mind, the world could be just a little uh, city or their little corner, but the world is big. When you travel like what we did in, in Africa, different parts of the world and traveling in the Caribbean, in, in the United States. Mm. You really and you've see been to South America, too. Is. You've been to South America, too, right? No, I've never been to South America. I would okay. love to go mm. there, too. Mm. Okay. Because that's right. where the uh, large doing the transatlantic right. the right. slave trade. That's where most of our people is at right. anyway, right. right there in right. South Africa. I mean, mm. South, South America. Mm. Um, what type of plans do you have short-term and long-term mm -hmm. for a Unity Community Center and all your mm -hmm. programs? Because your, your programs are, are branching off like... Mm -hmm. You know, you you mentioned the the brass drum. I mean, yes. the brass band. Oh, brass so I didn't even know that. <laughs> yes. uh, you mentioned. I know your son does the the jazz ensemble. Right. And yes. he comes and mm -hmm. uh, he wows and awes people. Uh, I remember they they came to the Tony Williams Jazz Festival right, just right. Wow. blew people away, man. You know. Yes. So what are, what are your short term and then long term plans for all your programs? Well, my short term right now, we have a great friend of ours named Arnold Bird, uh, the executive director of the OAO. And uh, Mr. Bird does so much great things for the community all over the Camden County mm -hmm. that he had uh, donated uh, a 10,000 square foot building to us on Fifth and Pine. And, and then that is like going to give us that real next level step mm -hmm. that we need. Mm -hmm to really uh, get the young people to see that you can make it in a city that's considered the worst city in America, the poorest city in America, an uh, environmental disaster, you know. Uh, no matter what, you can make it out of the worst. And then with what uh, Arnold Bird is doing for our organization is just, I mean, there's no words for us thanking him for mm -hmm. what he's doing. We're supposed to be making um, uh, uh, our grand opening in April of 2016. Mm. You know? So you, you've refurbished the building and everything? Right, that's what he's doing for us. Mm. You know, it used to be an area for storage that the last thing they was using it for. They did programs out of there. So they refurbished and are making it for fit our programs mm. that we're going to mm. be doing now. Mm. And it's going to be much room for it where we can advance our programs, teach more children that youth. We, we'll be able to advertise because the building we're in now for 33 years, we could never really advertise. Right, right. See, now right. we can advertise. We let the city know that we're here. Because the people know we're here, but nah, you'd be surprised, small as Camden is, if you mention our names, some people in Camden haven't even heard of us before. Mm, We've been here for 33 mm. years. And that's because we never really advertise what we do. Right. Yeah, right. the people that really know us are really more national people. The politicians know us. Uh, people who really read and study know us, but... Some people like in East Camden, North Camden, never even heard of us before. Right, right, right. You know. Now, do you plan on, um, because the way Camden is now, you have mm -hmm. small pockets of Euro, Euro Americans. You got right. uh, Caribbean, Afro Caribbeans. You got true, Latinos. True. You got right. Asians. So, do you plan on branching out to some of those communities? Right. Well, in our organization, we have all of those in our organization oh, yeah? now. Okay. So you got all Vietnamese them. people and okay, Cambodians. No, we don't have Vietnamese. We don't mm -hmm. have that. We have a lot of Latinos, African Americans, and that's basically it. And, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Jamaicans and Irish. We have you know, a lot of them coming mm -hmm. through. But now with with this larger facility that we've been trying to get for so many years, but through politics, that's another question I can. But I'm just answer this question here. That with this building here, we'd be able to advertise. We'd be able to do more for everyone, no matter who you are, mm. within the city of Camden, New Jersey, and the surrounding areas. Because our short range, because we also get in a, a building in Philadelphia, 
that from Philadelphia we want to go to Lawn Side, the Lawn Side, the Sicklerville, in that area, mm-hmm. Sicklerville, Williamstown. Mm-hmm. And after that, I believe that my part, my wife, my part would be over, and then our children could take it further. They want to branch further. That would be up to them. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. my personal short range is uh, Camden, Philadelphia, Lawn Side, Sicklerville, Williamstown area. Mm-hmm. That's my short plan range. Right okay. There. All right. Um, again, how can people see what you're doing? I mean, when you go up on the website, give us your website. Can they see um, some actual performances up there on the website? Yes, on our old website, unitycommunity.com, we have an icon that says a video page. We can show us full, uh, our real strong things that we have in all of our programs. So we have video for everything that we, we do. If you Google us, I say thousands of people. I mean, they tape us all everywhere mm-hmm, we travel, mm-hmm. and we're just all through uh, YouTube. And right, right, you know? right, 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 right. So it's kind of like easy to find us, mm-hmm. you know, because we do have video for every program that we do. Okay, that's on our website, unicommunity.com. So if someone wants to to book a performance uh, based on not just the the dance ensemble but also right. the various uh, music mm-hmm. uh, the jazz the brass band the drummers uh, how, how would they go about that uh, give us a call Eric code 856-365-4817 that's 856-365-4817 mm-hmm. now um, you're right you mentioned YouTube I mean you're all over YouTube do you have your own channel I mean do you have uh... well, we have our own well, I have my personal channel Robert Dickerson channel on YouTube mm-hmm. and I post up as much as I can but well in the future that's one thing I'm working with uh, my wife's cousin uh, they're computer geniuses and they're uh, putting together a brand new website for us and and they're giving us all the things that we need to know mm-hmm. to keep mm-hmm. us out there more because right. they said that one of our uh, weaknesses that we never promoted what we really do right you know right. Just, if they learn about us they learn about us through us performing but really promotion is where our weakness is at and this is what they're doing now mm. as we speak you know he called right. me this this morning so in addition to with the new facility in addition to the dance mm-hmm. the music uh, and your your son teaches music I mean writing music mm-hmm. the whole bit what other type programs do you do you anticipate um, uh, using and, and bringing there? Well, what we have, like two of my sons, they school teachers in the Creative Arts High School. They mm-hmm. teach music. They both had their master degree. My youngest daughter is a, a, a guidance counselor in Camden Public Schools, and my youngest and my oldest daughter runs my wife hair salon. Mm-hmm. She has a she's a she is certified. A licensed cosmetologist mm-hmm. in the state mm-hmm. of New Jersey. So uh, with them four, uh, they deal with what we call our business part, like our uh, music part and our entrepreneurial program. We want to build an entrepreneurial program where we can encourage those that, that those that can't make it to college, they could go through our entrepreneurial mm-hmm. program. Mm-hmm. And, and then we have uh, Queen GG, a lot of them working with us in that area. You know, uh, along with my wife and our daughters in that entrepreneur program that we have. That's a one program that we really wanted to, to develop, make that very strong. Mm-hmm. And then also uh, through our uh, martial arts program, we want to advance that, you know, uh, bring that more to the people, let them know that martial arts, we believe, is the ultimate discipline program. That if you want your child to stay out of trouble, if you want your child to have that discipline that they're going to need to survive against these hard times coming to them. You know, we can have to just get up in the morning and go to work. Get up in the morning to go to their business. It takes discipline to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, and, uh, and uh, then we have our the gospel program where we have our praise dance. And then in that is where we have members from all different churches all over the Delaware Valley that come to that and offer their skills. And uh, that's a program that those who are about the gospel come in and they mm-hmm. can enjoy themselves mm-hmm. in that program. Mm-hmm. And um, then we have, uh, of course, African Dance and Drum Ensemble. You know, then we have our Brass Band, which is part of the music. But then we have another group called the Little Jazz Giants, where how our sons got that Emmy Award 
was they had a musical thread where they believed that if you take a child from the elementary school into music, and then that's uh, that was where my uh, uh, youngest son was teaching the elementary children at that time. And they moved him to the middle school, mm -hmm. which where Hassan Sabri would take over that same group of children in the middle school, and they would grow into that program. Then my oldest son Jamal Dickerson took the seniors, and then that's why they could go and travel and win so many awards all all over the state of mm -hmm. New Jersey because they have children that have been doing the same uh, program since they were elementary children all up to high school. So when they go in, they be winning state championships and performing, they performed at the White House for President Obama. They did so many great things because of that reason. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So uh, so that musical thread, they said they would take that same concept and put it in education and really look at those children and take them through the educational process, we would really have a better society. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm taking up some of your time. Your phone is ringing off the hook, and you <laughs> you turned off about three phones, yeah. so I know I've, I've cost you some, some bookings or something. But again, <laughs> before we close, give us your phone number and your URLs for both of your websites. Yeah, our phone number is area code 856 Three six five four eight one seven, or you could uh, go to our website www.unitycommunity.com. I'm sorry, it's all one word, unitycommunity.com. And then in the future, in a short period, within a few months, you go up on our new website, unitycommunitycenter.org. So these are the ways you can contact mm -hmm. us. We would greatly appreciate coming out and performing for your organization, your church, your mosque, your community events, weddings, whatever you have or, or whatever creative program you're putting together, we'd be more than honored to come and support that, perform for that. And we have almost any, uh, we have a hip hop dance troupe, creative dance. We have so many things that could relate right into what your program would be to make it a greater program. Mm -hmm. Final series of questions, because I just just thought about it. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the black belt. So what what's your what your program is is somewhat unique. So how many how many uh, degree certifications do you give? Belt certifications do you give? Well, I was given a ninth degree uh, grandmaster black belt uh, for me being in the martial arts in 1968. Uh, so. I guess once I pass on and move on, high as we go in our artist tenth degree. Mm -hmm. But like I have uh, uh, forty two black belts, and then within that forty two black belts, a lot of them are really some of them are scholars, some have PhDs, some have very good jobs, some are you know students. Mm -hmm. You know we our organization been blessed in that area to have uh, that level of professionalism, that level of discipline. When you have black belts who can go into what they call the master rank, which is the fourth degree belt, is the beginning of the of the master rank mm -hmm. of the black mm -hmm. belt. Mm -hmm. But all, all these the, the levels that you travel, what you accomplish, uh, the the length of your discipline and the time you put in, and the dedication you put in, you know. And then the most important word I use is love. Cause love and character are very important. Right. Those two, two right. those two words, love because and character. The Western concept, when they started promoting the martial arts movies, right. they don't talk about that. They don't right. talk about the spiritual part. That's they don't right. talk about That's the correct. personal development. They don't talk right. about the real sense of warrior, mean who is a protector. Teach. They just want right. to go out and talk about people just beating folks up That's and right. stuff. <laughs> no, you're right. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. You know? But our, the, our key is love and discipline. Mm-hmm. And, and that's that's my model I had ever since I started the community center. You know. Okay. All right, brother. It's been a pleasure. Always good to see you. Yes. Uh, you know. And uh, Julia Stanton, we love you. Thank you for supporting us for all these years. Hey, man. It's my pleasure. Yes. Yeah. All right, man. Stay strong, black man. You too. <laughs> <laughs> all right.